Hello, this video is one part in a series of videos that will walk through the setup of Business Edition 6000 or B6K. In this walkthrough, I will go through setting up Unity Connection. So the first thing that needs to be completed before hopping on Unity Connection to configure it is to configure Communications Manager using the Voicemail Port Wizard. To get to the wizard, you need to go to Advanced Features, then Voicemail, then Cisco Voicemail Port Wizard. And that starts our wizard. We'll go ahead and change the default name to our fictitious company, Acme. We'll hit Next. We'll add two ports to this configuration since we only have a couple of users. And hit Next. We'll give our ports a description of Acme Voice Port. Device pool is going to be the default. There are no device pools on the server currently. Uh, no calling search spaces. Location will be hum none. Device security mode will be non secure voicemail port. And that's it. We'll click next. So we got our directory numbers it's going to create. Uh, we'll start with 5521. Uh, no partitions or calling search spaces on the server. Caller ID, we'll just change that and get, click next. We'll need a line group for these ports. So we'll go ahead and use the wizard to create this automatically for us instead of doing it manually. And we'll give it the line group name here. And then we'll click next. And then we come to a summary page. It basically tells you that we're going to create a couple of voice point ports, tells you what partitions are in, etc. So everything looks good. We'll hit finish. All right, so our ports have created successfully. We've got a couple more things we need to do. Hunt list and hunt pilot. We can start our hunt list creation by clicking this link here. Now we're at hunt list creation, so we'll hit add new. We'll give the hunt list a name. Then we'll choose the default communications manager group, and we'll check these two boxes here to enable it. Hit save. We're going to add the line group we created with the wizard. And it should be the only one that shows up. We'll click that one. And click save. We'll go ahead and click OK on this pop-up here. Now we'll go ahead and click save on this. Click OK on the pop-up. And the next thing we need to do is create a hunt pilot by going to call routing. Route hunt. And then choose hunt pilot. And we'll create a hunt pilot. Click Add New. 5500 is our hunt pilot. And we'll choose the hunt list we just created. And then we'll click Save. Now let's configure our MWI. So we'll go to Advanced Feature. Then we'll click Voicemail. And then Message Waiting. Go ahead and click Add New. We'll go ahead and give our first MWI of number of 5510. There's no partitions created. Uh, description is MWI off. We'll go ahead and keep it off selected and click save. Go ahead and copy that and make the one for our on. Uh, that number is going to be 5511. We'll change the description to MWI on and change the radio to on and click save. Alright, so the next thing we're going to create is our voicemail pilot. We'll go to Advanced Features, Voicemail, then Voicemail Pilot, and click Add New. This voicemail pilot number is going to match our hunt pilot that we created earlier, 5500. No calling search space, and we're going to make this the default. And we'll click OK on this warning. Click Save. Next, we're going to create a voicemail profile. And go ahead and click Add New. And then we're just going to give it a name, Acme VMP. Voicemail Pilot, we're going to choose the one we just created, 5500, and Partition None. We're going to make this one the default. And again, we'll click OK to the warning banner. And click Save. 
All right, now we're going to configure our lines to make sure that they are forwarded to voicemail. I have no answer, so we'll go to phone. Then we'll go to CIPC and line one. Now we'll scroll down the line page till we get to call forward and pickup settings. We'll check the voicemail box for forward no answer internal, which we'll also check uh, for three other boxes. And we'll go ahead and change the ring duration to eight seconds, which gives it a couple rings before voicemail picks up. And we'll click save. We'll go ahead and click uh, back to find list. Go back to our lines and we will choose find and choose line 3002, which is line one of the second phone we have in the lab. And we'll go to the same thing under the call forward and call pickup settings. Check the box. And then we'll put eight seconds in the ring duration and save. Now that we've got communications manager pre-configured, we'll go ahead and pop over to our Unity connection server and log in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the default names that comes with Unity Connection on a fresh install. Just kind of, kind of make it our own. So we're going to hit partitions. We'll click on the CUC partition and just give it a new name of Acme uh, PT. Hit save. Next we'll do the search space. And we'll go ahead and change the default of this one as well. And just make this one Acme-SS. And we'll go ahead and click Save. Next thing we'll do is, as we did with Communications Manager, is reduce our dependency on DNS. So we'll go under System Settings and choose Cluster. We'll hit Find to find the server. And we'll click on the server host name. And we'll change the host name to the actual IP address of the server. And we'll click Save. So we got that finished. We'll go ahead and go down to telephony integrations and start configuring that. The first one we'll click on is phone system. We'll go ahead and change the default name from phone system to Acme PS. We'll go ahead and click save on that. Now we'll go ahead and create the port group that we need. We'll click add new. For device name prefix, it must match what's in communications manager under advanced features, voicemail, Cisco voicemail port. For MWI, we've created those earlier, which is 5511 for the on and 5510 for the off. Next, we'll put the IP address of the communications manager. And we'll click Save. Next, we'll create some ports for the port group. So we'll do that under Port, Add New. And the number of ports is 2, just like we created earlier through the voicemail port wizard. Everything else here is good. We'll hit Save. And as you can see, we've created our ports now. Now we'll go ahead and do our LDAP integration with Active Directory. So we'll go ahead and turn on the DirSync service by going to Service Building. And we'll go to Tools, Service Activation. And then we'll scroll down and check the box next to Cisco DirSync and click Save. And it'll take a bit to activate. We'll click OK. Go ahead and go back to Unity Connection Administration. Now back on the administration page, we'll go ahead and scroll down to LDAP under System Settings. Expand that and choose LDAP Setup and check the box next to Enable Synchronization from LDAP Server. Once we save that, we'll go to LDAP Authentication. Check the box next to Use LDAP Authentication for End Users. As we did in Communications Manager, we're going to use the administrator account that comes with Active Directory. If you don't have access to the administrator account, you'll need to create one that has admin rights. Our search space is going to be in the users container. 
And then for the LDAP server, we're going to put the IP address of the Active Directory server. Click Save. Now we'll go to LDAP Directory Configuration. Add a new one. We'll give this one a name, MSAD. A distinguished name is going to be the same as the authentication. We're going to use the administrator account. We're going to put the password in. Search space is again going to be in the users container. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom here and put the IP address of our Active Directory server. And click Save. Looks like the ad is successful, so we'll go ahead and scroll down and just click on the button to perform a full sync. And we'll go ahead and click OK here to continue. And now it's syncing. So now we'll go ahead and do some authentication rules. Now we're going to click on recommended voicemail authentication rule. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to change the minimum credential link to four and uncheck the box next to check for trivial passwords. So we can have a, a basic password like one, two, three, four. Uh, if your organization doesn't want trivial passwords or needs a minimum credential link, this is the place where you would set that. Next, we're going to modify the user template that we're going to use to import our users with, which is the voicemail user template here. What we're going to do is we're going to change the password to 1234 uh, as each user comes in. So when they call in and dial into their voicemail, their initial password is going to be 1234. And if I hadn't changed the authentication rule earlier uh, to minimum length of four and trivial passwords, then I wouldn't be able to do this here. So we're going to go ahead and import our users now by going under Users, Import Users. We're going to find the users in the LDAP directory that we created earlier, and we're going to click Find. We're going to change the template we're going to import with is the voicemail user template that will assign each user a password of 1234, and we're going to import them all. Click OK, and now it's importing our users. And it looks like we've got two successes, so we click on users here, and we've got user 1 and user 2 in the directory. And that completes the Unity connection integration of the BE6K. The users that were imported should now be able to receive and check voicemail. The next video in this series will walk through the Contact Center Express integration.